This video was made possible by my Patreon. Become a Patreon today and support the channel directly by clicking the link in the description and signing up today. We've had ships for thousands of years, and both the pirates and vikings use completely sustainable ships to transport people, as well as cargo, around the world's oceans. And sure, sometimes they use pure manpower to make their ships go forward, but most of the time, they actually used sails to use the wind to their advantage. Skip forward a couple of years or so, and now we have these massive container ships circumnavigating the globe with thousands of containers on board. But unlike the pirate and viking ships that used the wind, these container ships used fossil fuels. But not any type of fossil fuel. You see, container ships use probably the cheapest and most polluting type of fuel we have available, bunker fuel. And the reason why they use this is down to basic economics. Less money spent on fuel equals more profit for the shipping companies. More pollution equals who cares as long as the profits keep rising. And even though it might seem obvious, making money will always be the main goal for any company, including shipping companies. So if that means polluting the world's oceans and our precious air, so be it. I agree that it is a worrying mentality to have, but it shouldn't really come as a surprise to anyone that the shipping companies think like that. And even if you don't believe in climate change and you somehow agree with their business practices, you can't deny the worrying increase in air pollution we have seen in the cities located near these shipping ports. But that shouldn't really come as a surprise either, at least to anyone who knows the side effects of using bunker fuel which I am sure these shipping companies do, so let's just give them the benefit of the doubt and say they might have just forgotten about them for an entire century. But it doesn't have to be this way. We can actually run these ships on something that is completely sustainable, even though it might be challenging. Which is why in this video, all the new and revolutionary technologies that could make this happen will be discussed. Also, only a small percentage of people who watch my videos are actually subscribed. So if you end up liking this video, consider subscribing, it's free and you can always change your mind. Okay, so let's start by acknowledging the fact that these shipping companies have actually been trying to cut down the fuel consumption on these massive container ships. Although those efforts have not been fueled by an interest to reduce emissions, but instead by a desire to cut costs. You see, the shipping industry is especially sensitive to price spikes in oil. This means that if oil prices were to increase by just a few dollars per barrel, many shipping routes could become unprofitable unless you reduce fuel consumption. And considering the fuel consumption of these ships is primarily the function of their size, weight and speed, and that the size and weight can't really be changed, you are left with only one option, speed. And speed can be tricky to modify when you are at sea. You see, the fuel consumption increases exponentially every time you add just one knot to your cruising speed. This means that you can actually save a lot of fuel by just sailing a few knots slower than usual. For instance, a container ship that weighs around 8,000 TEUs would consume about 225 tons of bunker fuel per day at a cruising speed of 24 knots. And at 21 knots, this consumption drops to about 150 tons per day, which is a 33% decline, which is quite significant. But even though it's great that they can save fuel by just sailing slower, they will encounter diminishing returns as they sail slower and slower. Which means that at some point, it will stop making sense economically when you also factor in time. But even though it seems like a great idea to just slow down the ships to save on fuel, there's actually a significant disadvantage of doing so. And that disadvantage lies in the design of the ships. You see, these ships are mostly engineered and designed to sail at the recommended 24 knots. So any variance in the intended cruising speed can be devastating devastating to the efficiency. And I think most engineers will probably tell you that efficiency is important, and especially important in a ship, because of the immense drag that water imposes on it. And this is a major advantage to a future sustainable ship, as we can engineer it from the ground up to sail at the most optimal cruising speeds. 
So now, I think it's a good time to talk about these ships, and about the technologies that could make them sustainably powered. And we do have a couple of options here. First is biofuels, which in theory makes sense. But once you take into account that we would have to use quite a significant area of valuable farmland to farm things like soybeans to fuel these ships, it becomes clear that it wouldn't really work, as we can't even feed our current world population. So taking away farmland to farm for fuel, or even cutting down forests to make more farmland isn't ideal, as it would have a negative impact on total emissions. I am not convinced that biofuels are the answer, but fortunately, we do have other options, and one of those being hydrogen. Hydrogen might be a viable option because of its high energy density, although hydrogen does have a major disadvantage which is the fact that it is currently very expensive. But if the price of hydrogen does go down in the future, it could actually work. For example, this study found that up to 99% of all voyages on the Trans-Pacific route could be fueled by hydrogen if just 5% of the cargo space was converted into fuel storage, which is quite significant. But even though 5% doesn't seem like that much, it could actually be the difference between making a profit and a loss. But the researchers also found that by adding just one refueling stop on the route, 99% of the ships could run on hydrogen without sacrificing any cargo space for fuel. And that's great, but it also begs the question of where these refueling stations should be located, as putting them too far away from the route could cut into profit significantly, and even make some routes unprofitable. One solution could be to place floating refueling stations in the middle of the Pacific Ocean that would receive its energy from a nearby windmill farm. Although I don't think it requires a genius to figure out that a project like that would not only be complex, but most importantly, very expensive to build. And who would even be the one to build a station like that, considering there would have to be a significant amount of hydrogen ships in service to even make it somewhat economically viable to build one of these refueling stations, which makes it very unlikely that private investors would fund such a project. So private funding is out of the picture, at least for now. And since it would have to be located in the middle of the Pacific Ocean, what government should even fund it, as it would be completely out of their territorial waters? This is why we would have to wait for those questions to be answered, and for hydrogen to become cheaper, before it would even begin to become a viable option. But now let's go back to the Vikings, to talk about whether or not wind could solve this problem. And the short answer is kinda although not with sails as we know them. You see, Maersk, the largest container ship operator in the world, is working together with Norse Power, the company behind the world's leading wind propulsion technology, to reduce emissions of Maersk's container ships. The technology they used is most easily described as spinning metal sails that are mounted on top of the container ships. They work by utilizing the Magnus effect, but just think of them as fancy windmills, as the Magnus effect requires quite a bit of explanation. But what they found was that by mounting just two of these on one of Mass's container ships, they reduced the fuel consumption by 8.2% over a full year of operation. They even stated that they could get that number up to 10%, which is pretty significant considering the size and form factor of these metal sails. But that raises the question, if it would be possible to mount enough of these on the ship to power it from port to port? And the short answer to that question is no. But the long answer is that if they were to mount these to the container ships, with the intent to completely fulfill the energy needs of the ship, it probably wouldn't be able to have any containers on board, as they would fill up the entire deck, which destroys the whole purpose. So even though it is a brilliant technology, it might only be used as an energy saving measure to maybe make some other sustainable options viable. Which is why I think now is a good time to talk about batteries. Because I'll have to admit that we probably won't be seeing batteries being utilized on these massive container ships. At least not on their own. 
as they would take up too much cargo space, even if we have a significant battery breakthrough. But if we use the metal sails from Norse Power together with a bunch of really high energy density batteries, like those Tesla's making, we might be able to make it a reality on some routes. Although there is a huge problem with battery supply at the moment, as demand far exceeds supply. So to take away millions of battery cells to put in container ships might not be the most optimal thing to do. So yeah, if battery supply increases over the next few years, we might see some container ships run on batteries who will be accompanied by the metal sails we talked about. But now, let's talk about probably the most controversial sustainable fuel source, nuclear. You see, nuclear has a bad rep, and for good reasons. You've probably heard of the tragic things that has happened because of nuclear, which is why I completely understand the argument against it. But we have actually made the technology behind it much safer and reliable, which is why we already see nuclear being used in aircraft carriers, as it can power these ships for decades without refueling. And because of that, it's a very appealing option. Although yes, it does have some trade-offs, like what are we going to do with the nuclear waste it will produce, and what if we have another one of these reactor meltdowns, which are all valid concerns. But they don't change the fact that nuclear is probably the best option we have, if we can figure out how to deal with the waste properly. So in conclusion, we do have some options options to make sustainable container ships a reality. Some are more viable than others, but we know that we will have to force the shipping companies with laws and regulations to even make them think about changing their current ways of doing business. 